All right, on today's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our TensorFlow course, and we did start our Malaria Functional API module. Let's have a look at what we went over today. Now, today was just note-taking. We didn't do anything in particular. We just went over the basic understandings of what we're going to get into and some of the things what we can expect and certain differences between the certain uh, APIs. So let's start with some light reading. In this section, we will be going over and understanding functional APIs. Here we will be looking at different ways of creating models other than the sequential API, which we've seen so far. In this section, we'll also look at callable models. We'll look at building models via subclassing. We'll also look at building our own custom layers. Previously in this course, we said that there are three ways in which models are built in TensorFlow. Those are the sequential API, the functional API, and model subclassing. As of this point, we've been using the sequential API. We may ask ourselves why we, may, why we may need to use a different method in creating TensorFlow models when so far we've reached close to a 99% training accuracy and around a 95% test accuracy. As you may have noticed, so far all of the models we've built have been using this kind of structure where we have an input, we have the first layer, then the next layer, which has been stacked in a sequential manner right up until the last layer, and then we have our output. So let's have a look at what that may look like. So you can see here we would have an input, a layer, a layer, and an output. Simple, sequential manner. So the question we could ask ourselves is, what if we had a model which takes in, let's say, two inputs and has three outputs, for example? These kinds of models are very popular in deep learning, and we will take a closer look at them. But before getting there, we could just imagine a problem where instead of classifying whether we have a non-parasitic cell or a parasitic cell, we want to know the exact position of that parasitic cell or in general that cell in the image. So it's saying instead of finding out whether just the, instead of finding out if the cell is either parasitized or non-parasitized, we want to know the know we want to know the exact location of that certain cell inside the image. So we would find that we would have one output which classifies whether it's parasitized or not. So our first output would be a parasitized or uninfected. The second output would give us the exact position of the cell in the image. Like I said, so instead of just finding out whether the cell is parasitized or not, we would also find out where that cell is in a specific image if we have more than one cell in the image at a time. So we can see how we would easily get two outputs from this. We, can really perform, we can't really perform this action with a sequential API. So that's why working with a functional API is very important. The next point is, we'll be able to create more complex models with the functional API. So there's a model known as the RESTnet, which is very popular in deep learning for computer vision. Now, a RESTnet structure will look something like this. As you can see here, we have an input, we have a layer, we have another layer that seems to be concatenated together before being passed into another layer before being passed into the output. So we have this model where one layer gets passed into the next layer. The layers are then concatenated before being passed into the next layer like I mentioned. So these kinds of structures or models should not be, could not be built with sequential API and hence the need for functional APIs. Now I didn't want to move too far. Like I said, we didn't really get too deep into it. We're just going over the basics of what to expect inside this module. So I left it there. Just a little basic understanding of what we're going to be getting ourselves into with this module. Also, let me give you a little progress report on our math module or our math course here. We did start a new module, Derivatives of Neural Networks, because we finished our forward propagation. Let's have a look at how far we got in that one. So we did quite a bit here. Really interesting stuff. Like I said, every day that I do coursework, I'm going to do math work alongside. And as you can see, we are getting pretty far ahead and we are doing quite a lot inside our math course. So this was the latest module that we got done inside our math course. And this was the forward propagation. And we got all of it done as of this morning and we're moving forward to a new module which is going to be the derivatives of neural networks so yeah this is just a little overcap of what we uh have done inside of this module here the forward propagation like i said pretty interesting things i'm learning a lot and it is going hand in hand with the coursework that we're doing so it's like it's not missing a beat at all everything is hand in hand so we're moving right along with it so that's done there this is going to be our next module inside of this course derivatives of neural networks yeah of course i will keep you guys posted every step of the way on the progress we make and i will see you guys tonight on artificial intelligence but for now this is the python poppy you guys stay gucci